Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. Today we're doing some DIYs for our kitchen and I know you guys really loved that one the last time so I came up with a few new ideas and I'm really excited to share them with you guys. And this video is perfect timing because today is actually Prime Day. So if you guys are not aware, there are huge discounts all over Amazon today and tomorrow. And today's video is sponsored by Eric, Lysol, and Finish. And you can get 25% off select products during the Amazon Prime Day sale. So later on in the video, I'm going to show you guys a few of my favorite products from them. So I have some really fun DIY projects to show you guys today and I hope that you guys like them. And before we get started, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for new videos every single week. And let's go ahead and get started. Hello from voiceover Tina. To kick off this video, I'm trying out a brand new technique for you guys in this project. So first we're mixing up some clear epoxy resin and you'll need to mix up a one to one ratio of the resin and the hardener. And I'm basically just gonna eyeball how much I'm going to need to fill up my mold. You wanna mix this up really well and as always, make sure that you're wearing gloves, a mask and have plenty of ventilation. After that, I'm mixing in some color pigments to create a terracotta color. So I added in three drops of yellow and then three drops of red to create an orange. And then I'm gonna add in a tiny bit of blue and this is gonna give us a really beautiful brown color. And if you don't have color pigments, you can also try using acrylic paint. I've used that in the past and that worked out pretty well. And now we're gonna take some plaster of Paris and we're gonna measure out just a little bit less than how much resin we have. And I'm gonna pour that straight into the resin and mix it up. This is a technique that is brand new to me and I was really curious to see how it worked out. I will link the original video that I saw Steve McDonald do this and he was experimenting with it and I thought it came out so cool. So I just had to try it out for myself and show you guys. And in his video, he used 60% resin and 40% plaster of Paris. And I thought the color would lighten up a little bit from the plaster of Paris, but it didn't quite get to where I wanted it to be. So I added in some white acrylic paint and also a few more drops of the red to create the perfect shade of terracotta. And again, I'm gonna mix this up super well just to disperse the color evenly to avoid any streaking. And as you guys can see, mixing in the plaster of Paris makes the resin a lot more opaque and it also creates a solid color rather than a translucent look that we're used to with epoxy resin. And I think this is also a great way to waterproof plaster of Paris, which is very porous in nature. So after everything was mixed up, I'm gonna go ahead and just pour this into a coaster set mold. This mold is actually a holder for a set of four coasters, but I thought that it would be perfect to use as a spoon rest because of the opening in it. So I'm pouring the mixture right up to the rim, and then from there, we're just gonna tap the sides to try to pop all the air bubbles. And I'm just gonna let that sit overnight for about 24 hours to cure. So I did have a little bit of resin left over, so I decided to add in some white acrylic paint and then mix it up lightly to create a marbling effect. And whenever I have leftovers, I don't like to waste it, so I like to use it to experiment. So I'm pouring it into one of the coaster molds, and I thought this would be a great way just to show you guys an example if you wanted to create a marbled look with this method. And again, I'm pouring that up to the rim and then just letting it cure overnight as well. Okay guys, it's time for the moment of truth. It's time to pop out our project. And I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit nervous, but once I got it out, I was super impressed with how this looked. I did have a little bit of air bubbles as you guys can see and that is totally my fault. When I was cleaning the mold before using it, there were a few drops of water that were trapped inside. So please learn from my mistakes and make sure that your mold is completely dry. And the marbling technique also worked really well and I'm just so happy with how this came out. Our new spoon rest looks amazing on my counter and I also absolutely love the marbled coaster. I think it looks amazing as well. I love experimenting with different media and this one was just so cool and fun to try out. There's so many things that you can create with this resin and plaster of Paris mix and I definitely wanna try this again and show you guys more ideas. Please let me know in the comments if you guys have any other requests that you'd like me to try and I cannot wait to work with this technique again. Before we move on to the next projects, I wanted to show you guys a few of my favorite products from Airwick, Lysol, and Finish, who are all today's video sponsors. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Prime Day is going on right now, and you can get 25% off select products during the Amazon Prime Day sale. And that's really awesome because these are all brands that I already use in my house, so now I'm able to shop them and save even more. So one of my favorite products from Airwick is their plugins, and this one is in their lavender scent, which honestly smells so amazing. I have one plugged in right where I enter my 
apartment so that when I come home, it just smells amazing. And I also have one plugged in my bathroom, which is really nice because it actually fills into the closet space. So all around my apartment is smelling really nice and fresh. They're made with 100% natural essential oils and this is also really easy to adjust. So as you can see at the top here, there is a dial and you can do it from low to high. And if you actually keep it on the lowest setting, that will last you up to 60 days. So that is amazing. So if you guys are looking for a way to make your place smell good 24 seven, I would definitely recommend the Airwick plugins. So next up we have Lysol and my favorite product from them has to be their disinfecting wipes. These come in a very convenient package. And I also like to take these when I'm traveling just so that I can disinfect any surfaces that I'm touching. And these are also safe to use on your electronics. So I'm able to clean my phone and my laptop and know that it won't get damaged. And these are also climate pledge friendly on Amazon. So that is really awesome. And lastly, we have one of my favorite products products from Finish, which is their dishwash cleaner. I don't know if this relates to anyone, but I am a 27 year old and this year was my first year using a dishwasher. Growing up, my family never used the dishwasher and we basically just used it as a drying rack. But after finding out that using the dishwasher actually saves more water, I decided to switch over and also it saves me so much more time. So these are really great because you can pop them at the bottom of your dishwasher with a full load in them and then just wash it as normal. And these are really great because they've removed hard water stains and I don't know if it's my apartment building or if it's the LA water but I always get really bad water staining on my sink and in my dishwasher so if you guys also really struggle with that these have been really amazing for that so those are my favorite products from those brands and what's really great is that you can buy them in bulk on Amazon so you guys can save even more and stock up now on these brands and make sure that you use my link down below so you can save 25% off select products during the sale so those were all my favorites. Let's go ahead and jump into the next project. For this next project, you can use any type of towel or napkin that you would like. And I'm using these flower sack towels from Target and they come in a pack of four for $4. To start, I'm flipping it back and forth and we're gonna do a simple accordion fold. From there, I'm gonna fold that in half, and then I'm taking the top half and I'm gonna fold it about a third of the way. Then flipping that over, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So it should look something like this, and I'm taking three popsicles stacked on top of each other and I'm placing that on top and on the bottom of our towel. Then we're gonna use rubber bands to hold those in place and I'm using four of those, spreading them out evenly. So I'm making a set of these with two different patterns. So for the second one, we're gonna create a circle design. And starting at any random spot, I'm pinching it until it creates this point. And I actually ran out of rubber bands, so I'm using some twine to tie these on, and this works really great as well. For the first piece, I'm wrapping it around a couple of times, about an inch from the top. Then I'm moving down an inch and tying on another piece of twine. And I'm going to add several more for this design, but you can make as many or as little as you like. And the more that you add, the bigger your circles will be. I'm repeating this step to another part of the towel and I'm gonna vary how many ties I add in. This is gonna give us a lot of interest and I created four of them in total. And this was such a fun process for me because I really had no idea how these were gonna turn out. This was my first time trying out this pattern and both of these patterns are inspired by the Japanese dyeing technique, also known as shibori, and you can create so many amazing patterns depending on how you fold, stitch, twist, and tie the fabric. All right, so for our dye, I'm using this color in emerald and I'm just following the directions on the bottle and pouring in some hot water at 140 degrees or higher. And since these are 100% cotton, I'm adding in some salt as well as some dish detergent. We're gonna give that a good stir and then add our dye. And since I did not want this to be too concentrated, I just added in a tiny bit of it. And to test your dye, you can dip in a napkin to see if it's the color that you want. And I thought this color was perfect. For each of our towels, I'm just dipping that right in there and letting it submerge for about five minutes. And after taking it out from the bowl, I'm gonna let that sit out for another 20 minutes. So 
So while we're waiting for that to soak, I'm gonna work on our tassels and I'm using this beautiful mustard macrame cord. To make these all relatively the same size, I'm using a piece of cardboard and I'm wrapping that around about five times. Then with another piece of macrame, I'm splitting that in half and taking one of those halves, I'm sliding it between the macrame and tying it super tightly. Then I'm cutting the looped end of it to remove it from the cardboard. To create our fringe, I'm brushing it out with a pet brush. And with the second half of the macrame, we're gonna wrap that around the top of it and I'm just gonna tie it to create the head of the tassel. And after that, I'm cutting it down to clean up our bottom and our tassel is complete. And I just repeated this process to create four tassels per towel. All right, so now it's time to reveal our pattern. So I went ahead and just removed the popsicle sticks and the rubber bands from our first design. And when I opened up, I thought this pattern just came out so pretty and it gave us such a nice linear look. I was super happy with how it came out and I'm just gonna go ahead and wash that with some cold water. For the second one, I cut off the twine and then I unraveled our gorgeous radial pattern. And if you guys could hear my reaction, I was actually gasping with excitement because I just thought these came out so beautifully. And to speed up our drying time, I actually just popped those into the dryer and now they were ready for our tassels. So I'm using a yarn needle to feed our macrame through and tie one tassel in each corner. And you guys, I'm not going to lie, I did not read the measurements of these towels correctly, and I thought that they were gonna be a lot smaller to create cloth napkins. These were actually 30 by 30 inches, so I was totally off, but I just went with the flow because I think this is such a fun project idea and you can use it with any fabric. I think creating this on a pillow would also look really beautiful, and these two colors together are totally inspired by something that I've seen at Anthropology or Urban Outfitters before. These towels were so much fun to create and I'm in love with the pop of color that they add to any kitchen or dining room. Both these tie-dye techniques came out so beautiful and I cannot wait to try out other patterns to create even more fun projects. And I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this process and are inspired to try it for yourself. This last project is the most simple project but it's one that I've been dying to make. I got these paint markers a while back and I just got a new pack of these pastel colors and these work really great on ceramics and I really wanted to use them for this project. So to get them started, I'm just pushing the marker against a piece of paper until the paint comes out. And then on a ceramic tile that I had left over, I'm gonna draw a straight line and then also a small block of color to swatch. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are also stationary slash supply nerds like I am. So with any new pack, I just could not resist but swatch it. And doing this also creates a great reference to look at, especially when you're choosing colors that you wanna use. And this is super helpful so that you know exactly how your colors are gonna look on the surface that you're working on. And with these paint markers in particular, you guys can see that they are super smooth. I did not notice any streaking and I'm really impressed with them. And of course, I'm gonna link these as well as all the supplies that I use in all the projects in my description box below. All right, now that we have them all swatched out, I'm gonna go ahead and work on our design. And I picked up this super cute, plain white ceramic mug. I thought this was just the perfect shape. And before we do anything, I'm just cleaning the surface with some rubbing alcohol. So for this design, I wanted to create a monogram. So as a guide, I'm using a super light peach color to map out the letter T with a few dots. To start a design, I'm drawing on some wiggly lines to create some vines. And this is gonna create a great base to build off of. I went into this project wanting to make some organic flowers, so I made these super simple, and you'll see that I'm just dotting them on and then drawing little blobs and lines to signify these flower shapes. For this type of design, you can totally have fun with it and just go with the flow, but one tip that I do have is just to pick up different colors for each area, and this is really gonna help me balance out the colors throughout the whole design. I also kept in mind the scale of the flowers, so this is gonna help us create some interest with some focal flowers that are a bit larger, and then creating teeny tiny little dots as filler flowers, and this is kind of like making a real bouquet. This design in particular is inspired by mugs that I've seen at Anthropology, and those are usually quite colorful and floral and just whimsical, so I'm emulating a similar design on our mug and just making it my own. 
and slowly you'll notice that our design is filling out quite nicely and if I notice any little gaps and open spots all I did was draw in a little leaf or add in some more dots what's nice about these paints is that you could build upon them so I basically just kept drawing on little flowers until it looked even To make our design permanent, I'm following the directions on the package and I'm putting this into a cold oven first. And then we're gonna turn the oven on and bake it at 350 degrees for about an hour. I absolutely love my new monogrammed mug. It's totally whimsical and the colorful flowers add a bright touch to my mug collection. And cute mugs like these are just great to put out on display as decor, but are also super functional as well. This is such a great project to personalize any design onto a mug and I think this would make such a special gift as well. So those were all the projects for today's video. Let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite. As per usual, I can't really choose a favorite, so let me know what your thoughts are down below and maybe that will sway my opinion towards one of these DIYs. If you guys are inspired by any of these projects, make sure that you tag me on Instagram so that I can see them and leave them some love. I've been really enjoying all the projects you guys have been tagging me in and some of you guys are even making reels, which is really awesome. Obviously, they're up on the screen here. So thank you guys for always sharing your creativity with me and also a big thank you to Airwick Lysol and Finish for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are planning to shop the Prime Day sale and want to stock up on any of those products, make sure that you click on my link down below and get 25% off of your entire order. So that's it for today's video. It is a super nice day out, so I think I'm going to go enjoy some time on the balcony. Thank you guys all so much for hanging out with me today. Stay inspired, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!